you know one of the places where we have to worship God and pray more than any other places is at our homes our houses our cars because in this place we live as we live in these places we have if we pray in these places if we worship in these places as the praises goes up his glory will come down where in our houses in our homes and if you are home that's actually what you want for your house for your home to be filled of the presence of the living god hallelujah you are protected and you are blessed if your house and your home can be filled of the presence of the living god amen then this is one of the secret that i found when i walk with god amen. that it is beneficial it is a blessing when you pray more in your house when you pray more in your car when you pray more at your working place when you pray more at the place where you spend most of your time because wherever you going to pray his presence is going to come and when that presence of god that glory of the lord comes to be in your house when that glory of the lord comes to be in your car it will be blessing wherever you are amen it will be blessing that place that place will be a holy place you know that place where you are praying is going to be what a holy place a holy place that's why churches are sacred places why churches are sacred or churches are special places is because people pray more in those places and the glory of the lord comes and fill those churches and when the glory of the lord dwells there in that place that place is, place is a what it's a blessed place are you hear what i'm saying amen then also if we can pray more in our houses if we can pray more in our cars if we can pray more everywhere we are everywhere we spend most of our time that place where we spend most of our time is going to be blessed amen the glory of the lord will bless that place hallelujah amen you know in my young christian days this is one thing god helped me to practice and to perfect that i may pray more i may fellowship with god more in my house in my car anywhere i go are you hear what i'm saying so that i may live in the presence of god i may never be anywhere where god is not because if i pray in my car if i pray in my house if i pray more wherever i go everywhere i go is what is the presence of god i remember in my young christian days i ha- i have a friend my friend loves to go used to love to go to the mountain and pray one time i went with my friend to the mountain to pray when our way up the mountain we found a big snake on our way a big snake this snake was a python on the way Amen. we had to run because that was a big python that we have ever seen in that mountain we have to run back home and i told my friend my friend i don't love going to the mountain i hate mountains i'm not a place of mine my, my friend love to go to the mountain and because i was somebody who was traveling a lot it doesn't matter where the company that i was working for was sending me sometimes that company will send me different places in hotels that's where we were staying but i will pray in those hotels the presence of god will come in that hotel you know sometimes um i was in the some this other place called rustenburg 
On this last time back, we were staying also in the guest house with my family. We were booked in the guest house. We spent about one to six months on that guest house. The presence of God in that house, it was so strong. The power of God in that house, it was so strong. I begin to wish this was my house, not because I love the house, no, the because of the presence of God the way it was. Are you what I'm saying? Amen. Amen. It happened again. I had to go back to Musina. Also in that house that the, the company gave me, yo, the glory of the Lord was so strong. Amen. The glory of the Lord was so strong. I used to enjoy the presence of God in that house. In which like I wish that house was my house. It happened now. That company gave me the bigger house, a better house. When I entered that house, hey, also the presence of God was so I'm not talking about the mountain. I'm not talking about the church. I'm talking about a mere place. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Amen. When we moved to that house, yo, also the presence of God was so strong. Amen. We begin Amen. even to have the, the, the services in that house where people used to come. And the presence of God was so strong, some people will be healed as they enter that place without even being prayed for. Amen. Some people Amen. will be delivered just entering that house. Some people after just entering that house will be blessed with a job and all that. It was so blessed. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. When we move to this house where we are staying now, also, you know, when you are praying here, when you are having the service, you just feel that cloud of power. You just feel the cloud of his presence. Then today in the afternoon when we're having a midday service, I was praying, I was in my car with one of my colleagues. The power of God was so strong again. And I told my friend, I said, oh, the glory of the Lord is too much now. You know what I told my friend? I'm just talking raw before I go to the word. I told my friend, I said, I want to pray for my family members. <laughs> what kind of a pastor is this? I say, I just want to pray for my wife. I just want to pray for my children. Because now I know when the glory is like this, whoever I pray for will be blessed. And when I know that whoever I'm going to pray for is going to be blessed because the glory is, big, is too much. I'm like, I want to pray for my mother. I'm say, I said to other people, if I have to pray for them, it's a bonus. Amen. To me, the blessing starts where? At home. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yeah. We must pray more in our houses. We must pray more in our cars. We must pray more at the place of our work. We must pray more at the road in such a way that car, that car becomes so blessed. That car, it begins to be filled of the power of God. You know, I remember when I was saying that I will never sell my car for anything. You know, if I want to buy a new car, I can buy a new one tomorrow. But the way I love that car, not because it's beautiful, but because of the memory I've spent with God in that car, I don't want to sell it for anything. Are you hearing what I'm saying? The way I enjoy to be with the, I don't know. Are, are you getting what I'm saying? This is the result when you have prayed more in that car. When you have prayed more in that house. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Amen. I wish I'm talking to somebody. Amen. Then, I want to, you know, you must pray more where you spend more of your time. If you spend more of your time in your car, pray more in your car. If you spend more of your time in your house, if you sleep in that house, pray more where? In that house. The more you pray in that house, the more that house is blessed. The more that car is what? It's blessed. 
then that's one thing I've learned in life that if I have to spend my time with God anywhere it's in my house more than anywhere because many people they spend time uh, with God in church they spend time in the glory of the Lord at church it's not a problem it's good the problem is that they don't sleep at church the problem is that they sleep away in their houses they don't know that I remember one day I was doing deliverance on this daughter of mine in Botswana. This idol, this demon says that ah, when this couple go to church, they wait for them at the gate. They don't enter the church. The church is fire. The church is full of presence of God. But that demon says that when they come back home, they that demon enter again. Then the problem is not when you go to church. The problem is where you stay. That's why most of the problems people are going through, they're not at church. They are not fighting with their spouses at church. They are fighting in their home. Peace, there's no peace at their home. The tokoloshis are not tormenting them at church. The tokoloshis are tormenting them where? In their houses, in their homes. Then they have to learn to pray more. We have to learn to pray more in our houses. So that when you enter your house, you are entering the presence of God. When you enter your house, you are entering the power of God. Because in your house, that's where you sleep. You don't sleep at church. Then want the glory of the Lord to be in your house. I don't know whether you're hearing what I'm saying. Amen. Want the glory of the Lord to be in your car. Because you spend most of your time traveling in your car. And if you spend your time most in the, in the glory of the Lord in your car, your car will be covered by fire. Your car will be covered by glory. You will be protected. No accident will touch that car because it's in the presence of God. Hallelujah. If you are the presence of God is filling your house, I'm telling you, you will never lack grocery. You will never be poor because God is here. Your shepherd is in your house. Like David said, the Lord is my shepherd. Therefore what? I shall not want. Amen. I don't know whether you are hearing what I'm saying. Amen. Amen. Then if the glory of God be in your house, if you are unemployed, God will be seeing you where? In your house, where hey, my daughter is unemployed. It's impossible. You won't spend two to three months without a job if you are living in the presence of God. But if you live the glory of the Lord at church and now you are at home alone, the witches are not following you at, at church. The witches are following you at your house. Let them come at your house, the witches. Let them come, those tokologists, at your house. They will find the fire hovering all over your house. They will find yeah. angels walking up and down. I remember this other day I was asleep in my house. When I was asleep, I saw this other evil man trying to enter my house. He could not enter. When I was asleep, God was opening my when I was showing me my, when I was asleep that day. There is a, this evil person. He wants to enter. He can't enter. Why? My house is full of fire. My house is full of power of God. Are you hearing what I'm saying? A Christian must spend most of their time, must live in the presence of God. Even when you get your job, turn that working place to be a prayer place. Pray more at that work. Let the glory of the Lord fill that working place. Because you want to see God. You want to experience God where? At your working place. Some people, they want to experience God at church. But the problem is that people who are fighting them, they are fighting them at their working place. But now, imagine people are fighting you at your working place. And you are, your God is there. The angels are there walking around. I'm telling you, you will just hear that you, your God is turning things around. is beginning to fight for you. Are you what I'm saying? That means everywhere we go, we need the glory of the Lord to live in, to move in, 
to act in. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Then wherever you are is going to be heaven on earth. Now I want to live in heaven on earth. I don't want, I, we as Christian, we must begin to experience the glory heaven now. Huh? The, the, this kind of grace we are in, the Bible said that Jesus Christ, one of his name is called Emmanuel. God is with us. We have got the grace, God, our God can be with us anywhere, anytime, anywhere. I don't need to go to church to meet my God. We have to just come together and the glory of God comes down. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Amen. We have got a different grace in the New Testament. We must not suffer like the people who have to go to the temple to meet their God, to go to the mountain to meet their God. No. Now I said I want my God to be in my house. I want my God to be in my car. I want my God to be in my working place. Even, you know, if I drive in this road every day, that means this road has become a church now because it's full of fire. It's full of the presence of God. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Do you want to confuse your biggest enemy, the devil? This is what you must do. Pray more wherever you want to see God at. Hallelujah. That's what the Bible says that in the book of Psalms 91 verse number 1. I who dwells in the shelter of the Most High rest in the shadow of Almighty. I who dwells, whoever dwells, now because we have personalized this one, I who dwell, when you dwell in the shelter of the Most High, in the presence of the Most High, you rest. No more struggling. Huh? No more fighting. No more struggling. No more poverty. You rest in the shadow of the Almighty. Hallelujah. And what do you say? You say, the Lord is my refuge and my fortress. My God in whom I trust. That means it's your refuge. It's a place when the things, the days are dark, when the things are not going well, you run to him. You stay in him. Imagine, now you are st- the Lord is staying in your house. The Lord is staying in your car. That means when the things were tough outside there, when you come back, you enter your house. You enter the glory. You enter the presence of God. You enter the power of God. That's why we're having these services every day. To keep the glory of the Lord. Hallelujah. You enter your car. You are entering an anointed car. Anybody. I have seen. I have seen people who have have come once in my house. I remember there was this other man. He graduated. He even had honors. This man. No job. No job. One day after the service. He came here and sat down. I prayed for him here in the house. Oh, that man, within few few months, if not weeks, he was blessed with a job. Where did he get it? We were praying in my house. My house is the glory of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. My Amen. house is a blessed house. Amen. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Amen. Your house must be a blessed house. Your house must be an anointed house. Hallelujah! Your car must be an anointed car. Wherever you go, the glory of the cloud of the Lord shall go with us in Jesus' name. We must live in the presence of God. We must live in the power of God. We must never allow ourselves to live in an ordinary land. No! Wherever you go, that cloud must go with you. Hallelujah. That's what the Bible says that even the children of Israel, the children of Israel, when they come out of Egypt, the Lord make sure that there was a cloud. This kind of the cloud, it was the cloud that covered them during the day. 
that it protect them from the sun during the day and it gave them direction on which way they should go then in the night it was a pillar of fire it covered them and produced what light but at the same time it shows them on which way they should go i'm telling you when the lord is your shepherd when the lord is in your house he will protect you he will give you a covering hallelujah Amen. after that he will give you direction of your life he will give you direction of your life you will never be lost because the lord will be giving you direction on which way you should go hallelujah amen just pray for one minute as we are getting deeper in the lord shakoskata pasota labayando rabaso katia bahaya makatala basonta raba Ya kuria sota la bahanda. Hey. Hallelujah. Amen. Psalm 91 verse number 3. Surely he say he will save you from the fallasness and from the deadly pestilence. You know, when you are living in his presence, when you are living in his glory, he will he will go and see this snare which was prepared for you. And he will direct you not for that snare to entangle you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? He will, he will save us from the foulest snare. I say from today, from now on, no trap will ever catch us in Jesus' name. Amen. No trap. Let me tell you something. You know, in the days of old, there was another man. This man's name was a man of God, Prophet Elisha. Then there was a king of Aram. King of Aram wanted to attack king of Israel. But in Israel there was a man of God by the name of Elisha. Whenever this man of Aram will be planning, God will be revealing it to his servant. After that, Israel, where they were trapped, they will not go. Where they were trapped, they will not go. I'm saying to you, where you are trapped, we will not go in Jesus' name. If we are trapped, that trap will not work on us in Jesus' name. Let me tell you this. When you live in this kind of glory, uh, even if you are eating a food in your house with a poison, that poison will not kill you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Amen. That poison won't kill you. No. You will eat that poison. As you eat that poison, it will turn into food. When there's somebody put a poison on the food, they will wonder, ah, why is it not killing you? Why? You cannot be trapped. I don't know whether you are hearing what I'm saying. Amen. I don't know whether you are hearing what I'm saying. That's why the Bible says that in the book of Mark chapter 16. Let us go there. La cross katifa son taliba zon takiba. Shakuria stola katoba zon tara bahaya. Hekele bahaya. Oh, verse number 18. They will pick up snakes with their hands. And when they drink deadly poison... It will not hurt them at all. When they place their hands on the sick, the sick will get well. That means you will, even if there is a poison, you will eat that poison. It will not harm you at all. Hallelujah. It will not harm you at all. That's what the Bible says. No weapon fashioned against you shall prosper. I said to us, no weapon fashioned against us will ever do what? Will ever prosper. Are you hearing what I'm saying? As we live in the presence of the living God. As we live in the glory of the Lord. I decree and I declare we are protected in Jesus name. Hallelujah. I'm saying to you, he's the Lord who's blessing us. 
He is the Lord who will be protecting us. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Okay. Let me take you to verse number four now of Psalm 91. He will cover you with his feathers under his wings. You will find refuge. His faithfulness will be your shield and rampart. His faithfulness will be what? You are shield and rampart. The Bible is telling us tonight. Hey, he will cover you with his feathers. When that means when you are in your house, listen to this one right now. The Lord will cover your house also with his feathers. He will send his angels to protect you in your house. Are you hear what I'm saying? These are the angels to do what? The angels to protect you. In your house, in your car, in your wherever you go, because you are living where? In the presence of the living God. I remember a few months ago we went to we went to Deben. When we went to Deben as a family, you know, the parking in Deben was outside. My car was parking outside at Deben. Hallelujah. Amen. As I was, it, the car was parking outside when I was um, not really seeing very well, seeing very well the guards in the car. God showed me this other strong angel guarding the car outside. There was a strong angel which was guarding the car. You know, when before I was saying, okay, what is going to happen to the car? But after when I saw that angel, I slept like a baby. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I'm saying to you from today, don't worry about anything. The Lord will take off your everything in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. The Lord is going to cover us with his feathers. And under the wings of the Lord, we will find refuge. You will be untouchable. We will be unstoppable. In the name of Jesus of Nazareth. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. That's why verse number 5 is saying that. You will not fear the terror of the night, nor the arrow that flies by day. How can you fear the terror when God is with you? How can you fear the terror when God is on your side? How can you fear anything when God is on your side? There is big, strong angels on your side. How can you fear anything? You fear absolutely nothing. You fear no witch. You fear not Okolosh. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Last month, I went to my home village in Venda. When I was there, when I was praying in that house, I could feel the, the power filling the whole yard. I could feel the anointing filling the whole yard. Oh, and I was like, oh. I used to, you know, let me tell you this. Like I used to say that when I grew up, I used to know the witchcraft happening on that village, on Venda. Hallelujah. Amen. But when the power was there, I was like, where are those witches now? Where are those tokoloshes now? Come, let them come and test a bit of this. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Amen. Let, them, let them come and test about the, the, a bit of this fire. A bit of this anointing. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Amen. When you are living in the presence of the living God, you fear no witch. Amen. You fear no tokolosh. Amen. Instead of you running away from witches, you go, you chase witches. You, you go around looking, where is the next witch to destroy? Where is the next witch to, to, to lead to Christ? Are you hearing what I'm saying? We are not the type to be scared about the things of the devil. No! The devil is scared about us. Are you hearing what I'm saying? The devil is running away from us. You know, like, it's like, this thing is like this. Listen to this one very carefully. It's like the light and the, and the darkness. Isn't this sometimes when you open the door of your house during the night, it's dark. 
When it's dark, you switch on the light and the darkness what? Runs away. Are you what I'm saying? Amen. Then it's like that. When you are the child of the living God, when you live in the presence of the living God, everywhere you go, if there was any demon, that demon ran away when you enter. Hey! Are you getting that one? You just enter a place where there was a demon, that demon psh, ran away. Because the demon is seeing the light. The demon is seeing the Lord with you. Then that's why we must make sure we live in his presence. We must make sure we don't visit his presence. We don't visit his glory. But we live in him. We move in him. We act in him. Oh, I remember this song. Ravua na ye. Ra 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 na ye. Oh, yes, so rich in bira na ye. Are you getting what I'm saying? Amen. We must sleep in him. You must wake up in him. You must move in him. You must eat your food in him. There must never be a place where you are found where offside out of his presence. Even the whole of this year, and I'm telling you that, once you have done that the whole of this year, you are, we are more than the conquerors. Are you hearing what I'm saying? As the Bible says that if God be for us, who can be against us if God be for us? I'm saying Amen. to you tonight, nobody can be against us in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I want you to begin to pray for yourself wherever you are. Begin to pray. Manduru bozunda la bazunda la bazunda rabayande. Manduru bo yanduru bo yanduru yande. Oh Lord, keep us, make us to live in Your presence. Make us to live in Your power. Make us to live in Your glory. Attach us with your presence. Attach us with your glory. Attach us with your power. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. You know, as a Christian, we are like a, an ark. You know, an ark? In the Old Testament, there was an ark of the covenant. On that ark of the covenant, the glory of the Lord used to dwell there. That ark, wherever it goes, the glory was there. But now in this New Testament, the glory of the Lord is living in us. Wherever we go, God is going with us. As we fellowship Amen. with Him, that glory is manifesting also externally. Hallelujah. It's filling our surrounding. Wow. Sometimes you will enter. You will enter the town and the glory will fill the whole town. You will enter a mall. The glory of the Lord will fill the mall. You will everywhere you go. God is about to go with us. Hallelujah. Amen. Wow. I want you to claim every blessing you want wherever you are. Claim every blessing from the presence of God. Claim every blessing from the glory of the Lord. Claim every blessing. Ask every blessing you want. Mantalapasanda. 
Every blessing you want, claim it. Every blessing you want, claim it. If it's a job, you are employed. If it's an increase, you are there is an increase. If it's a death, yes, things are happening all over. Things are happening all over. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. One of the greatest things that God has done in my life is to show me his pre- the road map to his presence and to attach me with himself. That is the best thing that he have ever, ever done. Amen. And what I treasure the most in my life is the presence. It's him, not more than anything. Hallelujah. Amen. You must treasure that. As a Christian, treasure what? His presence more than anything. Amen. Amen. Say, Jesus, never leave me. Holy Spirit, never leave me. Holy Spirit, never leave me. God Almighty, never leave me. God Almighty, never leave me. Never leave me. Never leave me. Pray that prayer, oh Lord, never leave me. Never leave me, Lord. Never leave me. Please. For the rest of my life, I want to live in your presence. I want to live in your power. I want to live in your glory. Say Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, Fire, 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 Say anything. Which is not of God in my body, in my life, in my family. Catch fire, catch fire, come on, ah, ah, ah. Wherever you are, receive every blessing you want. Receive every blessing you want. Receive every blessing you want. Receive 